Okay, I'm gonna show you today how to use visual measuring. In particular, how to use visual measuring when you are drawing something that's foreshortened. So I have this sandal here, and when something is just like, you know, in a profile or a front view, um, normally it's, you know, coming at you, it might be coming um, on the side. Um, you can pretty much figure out where the middle is rather easily. But when you're drawing something that's foreshortened, something that's coming at you, um, where you know one part of it is much closer than others, it becomes a little bit more difficult. So that mathematical middle of here might just start to look a little bit lower um, than um, what it would if it were done like this. So we're gonna show you how to do that today. Um, so the first thing to do is to pose your object. And so we're gonna use the photo as an example um, for practicing, but you could just take your object and point it at you as well and set it on a table and draw it. Um, so what the first thing that I do is to figure out where the top and the bottom of the object is. And so you can easily do this on your photo by putting in horizontal lines that are parallel to the picture. All right, okay. So I can kind of clean that up if I need to, All right? And so that tells me where the top and the bottom of it is so that I can find the middle. So you can use math to find the middle. Um, this one, this photo is like four and a half. So that means two and a quarter would be the math middle. You could also just kind of find the middle like that and kind of eyeball it. Most of the time when you're drawing, that's what you do instead, right? Just kind of find the middle that way. And so what I would do first is on the photo, right? I would um, use horizontal lines for the top and bottom. And then I would, on the photo, once again, I would find the middle. And that's the thing that makes something foreshortened look different, that this middle right here is um, at the very bottom of that um, leather piece, which would be right here in a profile. So all of that visual information that's right here gets um, put like ex exaggerate it looks really big and all of this part right here like three you know two-thirds of the entire thing gets compressed into that second half of your image um, so that's why it's important to do this measuring so then what I would do is on a sheet of paper when we're gonna use our sketchbooks I would decide where the top and the bottom of your object is going to be so we're going to draw a different side we have here. You can notice I'm just kind of sketching it in with pencil. You can use a ruler if you wanted to. And then once again, you want to find the middle. Um, you can do this really lightly. Right, find the middle. That's a quite the middle. So on your uh, drawing, you want to determine your size. So we want to draw it larger. So you're gonna put in the top and bottom. Um, notice I'm writing notes, right? Um, this will help me to learn this procedure. It's another way of doing it, but also when you're doing it on your own, then you can kind of go back and reference because you're gonna use it for a different object. Um, I'm gonna be using my cookie cutter eventually, not drawing my sandal. Um, and so, um, what I want to do is put those in. Now, when you are also doing visual measuring, besides doing height, you can also measure width. And so what I could do here is repeat the process with verticals, if that helps. I feel like sometimes with some of our foreshortened objects, it doesn't make any sense for us to do that because the angle is much more complicated um, where when it's tilting at us something like this. Um, so what I'm gonna do is measure width and see that basically the width of my shoe is this half distance here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some tick marks in here to let me know that the width of my shoe at the widest part is about half of that. That's kind of nice that that worked out for us, but that doesn't mean actual object, it will be 
as easy as this one. You might find that you have it be uh, you know, two thirds or one third or whatnot. So we have to be very careful when measuring that width. So then what I per personally do is I start with the part that is closest to me. And so what part of the shoe is gonna be closest to me? It's gonna be this tip part right here. On your object, it might be the thing that's closest to you, could be maybe a hand or something coming at you as well. Um, I was taught um, from early on from an instructor to start at the bottom and move up, and I know that sometimes that is hard depending on sub, um, media, because we might smear something. Um, for our artwork, we're going to draw it roughly on newsprint paper and then we'll transfer it onto the good paper using a light box or a window. So I'm not overly concerned with smudges at this point. So then what you want to do is you want to start drawing in you know, basically your um, bottom half of the shoe. right? And you start with like basic shapes. right? And so you can pretty much do, you know, where you can look and see here where the middle is, right? Here it kind of tilts back on the side. I can use a pencil or a stick to kind of look for where that tilt is and bring it back here to kind of mark where that's gonna be. And I can go in here and, you know, I could always measure, you know, where that is, how wide this is going to be. So I'm comparing how wide this end is to the the beginning or the front of it, I should say. So it's gonna be much more narrow, right? And I can kind of go in there and kind of do this almost like potato shape, right? And so I can start with the basic shapes first, and I'm gonna look and see, okay, the strap is about halfway here, right? So I'm gonna always do kind of some comparisons, and I'm gonna go ahead and start putting in some like more precise detail. So, you know, start really light, start closest to you so that you can get the, the details kind of layered in. If you make some mistakes, that's okay. I'm gonna look at like the negative space. What does this negative space look like for this leather part? Right. Sometimes with these angles, you know, like here, I can take the stick again and I can measure or mark an eyeball where that bend is going to be. Here, I can use this end of this brush, kind of go in and mark in that angle. Now I'm not overly concerned with putting every last stitch or every last part of the buckle at this point because what if my proportion is off? Then everything's gonna be off. So I'm just gonna kinda of go in here and get in some of those basic details, basic measurements. So I can kind of see really roughly where everything is gonna go. I'm gonna leave this off to the side here. see where these buckles are see how they kind of align in space here um, if I am using a um, an end of a paintbrush but you could always use another pencil probably have a few kind of sitting around All right notice how these buckles go off the edge of that sole All right the sole is kind of like in there So I kind of have some of that basic shape in, and you know I'm going to have to spend some time kind of reach, re-measuring, re really refining uh, where some of these details are. Right? Um, I can compare, you know, how many, you know, the thickness of the sole, how many times it goes up until I hit the middle. If I need to, I can be more precise about it. Use a ruler. So here it's a half an inch, whole inch, another inch. So it's like four of those up, 
right? So if I'm a little bit off, I can go back in and define it, right? Um, notice really carefully how things get smaller as they go back into the distance. You're seeing less and less of those details, right? And so when I'm in the refining stage and I'm confident that my measurements are okay, you'll notice that now I'm kind of going in and darkening the details because that way when I go to transfer it, I have some really strong marks that will be easy for me to see. And if I had to really go back in, I could erase some of those lesser details that I did lightly. Now if you see thickness, I want to make sure you draw in those thicknesses like the leather. compare you know how much space that buckle takes up right if I had to reevaluate I could always check angles to make sure my angles of it are correct I think I made that part too a little bit too big right so you can go over this as many times as it takes so that you can really refine and add detail to your shoe. And notice that it's still sketchy and that's okay. We're just practicing right now. So take your time, make sure that you pay attention to your notes. Um, you know, really get in the habit of recording for yourself um, so that you know what your steps are. So remember, after you get those measurements on, you wanna start with drawing what's closest to you Right, so probably at the bottom for most of us, right? Or at least with this shoe, probably, um, we'll all start at the bottom. And then you can start with general shapes, right? And measure your proportions, and then make sure that you get more specific as you go and refine your detail. And you also can make things darker. Okay, I hope that helps. If you need to pause and rewind it and watch it again, feel free to go ahead and do so.